Ralph Waldo Emerson once stated, live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, drink in the wild air. We recently journeyed from Port of the Islands Marina, just north of the Everglades in Florida, to our home port of Bohicket Marina on Seabrook, Kiowa Island in South Carolina. On board, we had two sailing experienced charter guests looking to gain some offshore and nighttime sailing hours. Both had taken numerous ASA sailing courses and now wanted hands-on sailing adventures to complete their training and gain confidence to sail on their own. We left the dock around 11 a.m. on Friday and began our voyage. High tide is the only option to leave Port of the Islands Marina to make the eight mile mangrove river trip to the Florida Bay. Our destination, dry tortugas. The wind was extremely light and we ended up having to motor sail, so we changed our destination to Marquesas Keys. We arrived about 3 a.m., anchored, and caught some shut eye. We woke to a beautiful morning and did some reconnaissance in the dinghy to find the best snorkel spot. We anchored 3.30 in the morning last night, right outside of Marquesas Key in the Florida Keys. And we obviously are becalmed. Not happy with our existing anchor location for snorkeling, we pulled the hook and headed south to the ocean side of the Marquesas Keys. While normally not a good option, the slick, calm seas made this possible. There we found some beautiful coral growth and quickly jumped into the water for about an hour. After snorkeling, we were hoping for better wind, but no luck. So we pulled anchor, motor sailed up a bit, and enjoyed the beauty of the water. Here we are at Sand Key Light right off of Key West. No wind today, so we have made an, an executive decision, actually. You know, we had a Zoom meeting and all, and um, decided that we're gonna go for another snorkel, and we're gonna anchor here tonight. And then the wind should fill in by noon tomorrow. We may head out earlier than noon just to get a head start on the day. Sand Key Light used to be on land with a lighthouse keeper even living there before a hurricane came and changed the landscape forever, something that happens quite often in the Keys. We left early the next morning to get away from the sargassum. First officer, been a little shut eye there. There was a possibility of storms in the area, but we thought they looked all pretty manageable. We joked about sailors who talk about how ridiculous it is to think you can outrun a storm, but she wasn't that close yet, so we thought we had a good head start. We had a sailing day full of ups and downs. That is, we put the sail up and we took the sail down. We reefed the sail and we shook out the reef. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. 
Numerous small storms surrounded us. We had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. We saw 35 knots of wind at the worst point, but thankfully it was short-lived. And luckily the sea had not had enough time to build up substantial waves. As usual, Pilar performed admirably under those conditions. Here's what we're dealing with. That's where it goes and that's where it is. Our serious XM weather forecast on our Raymarine really helped us dodge the worst storms, gave us ample warning so we could properly reef at the right times. We also did stay in the Gulf Stream to gain those extra two knots of speed. Right where we're at on the water, it was a little bit difficult to get out of the Gulf Stream. We are now approaching Lake Worth Inlet, Florida, which is by West Palm Beach. We decide to pull in here and wait another day for some better winds. And my donor lives here, so we're gonna get a little bit of visit. Go out to dinner, get off the boat for a little bit. We are headed to Sailfish Marina. Going to fill up our fuel tanks. Uh, unfortunately, it is $7.13 a gallon. And get some fresh water. And we're actually able to grab a tea head dock. So everyone can come and go as they please. The next morning we visited Peanut Island for another snorkeling adventure. This was a surprisingly great spot. We saw Eagle Ray, Barracuda, Sergeant Majors, Atlantic Spadefish, a shark, and really beautiful experience. There's also a island walking trail about a mile and a half and a picnic area along the beach with state-run facilities. So you can hang out here the entire day. It is only accessible by boat and they are also in the process of restoring an old Kennedy complex that was on the island and hope to have it open sometime in 2025. Back on the boat, my daughter Joanna drilled fresh coconuts for coconut water. The next morning we left and headed north. The wind was finally going to turn in our favor. Our route was to head straight to Bohuket Marina. Goodbye, West Palm. Captain Steven. Captain Steven's eating breakfast. We had cornbread this morning, homemade with butter. Butter with butter. Waiting Fresh. on a bit of wind. Should hit some in a couple of hours. In the meantime, looks like there's a big storm off there. 
right off to your starboard. We're not going there. Well, I'm hoping not. Maybe we'll pick a little wind out of it without getting in the middle of it. That'd be nice. All right, let's see. How was that homemade cornbread this morning? Man, that was good stuff. It's like eating cake with butter on it. Good stuff. Homemade cornbread. Left this morning. Eh, pretty late. Typical Palm Beach departure. Is that alarm? Zero eight hundred hours or so. And uh, hit the Gulf Stream immediately. No wind yet. We're going to count on some wind shortly. Uh, we are in the Gulf Stream. Still making 8.2 knots and trying to fish as well. So we will head the Gulf Stream all the way out. Gulf Stream fishing. We're going to catch plenty of mahi. We, we hope it's the season for it. Well, the winds, they just keep uh, changing. Now we got a little northeast wind and then the storms come out and then there's lots of wind and then the storms go away and there's no wind and just change the sails one direction and then you gotta change them another direction then you gotta take them down and then you gotta start the engines and then you gotta put them back out and then you can turn the engines off and then you gotta do it all over again make up its mind. Anyway, we're headed to somewhere, wherever the wind's taking us. Maybe the Gulf Stream, maybe stop in St. Augustine. We're gonna make that decision in 11 hours when we hit the Cape Canaveral final decision point on our trip. So we'll let you know in 11 hours where we're going. We are approaching St. Augustine Beach, literally the beach. So here's the plan. One of our guests is going to get dropped off at the beach in the dinghy, of course, and uh, his wife is waiting for him on the beach. Isn't that romantic? There they go, the beach drop off again. A little bit of surf out there. Well, this is not going to work out at all. It is way too rough and the beach has a drop off right before it so you can't even get close. You're, you're six feet of water and then um, you just can't even get close. So, return to ship and head into the channel. After we left St. Augustine, we had the best two days of sailing of our entire trip. I mean, drop everything, the wind is perfect kind of sailing. We used the Maine and Genoa from St. Augustine to the Florida line. Then the southwest wind came up and we were able to fly our parasail or spinnaker all the way home to South Carolina. Wind speeds of 22 knots on the stern made for an amazing downwind sail. The following seas would rush forward under the bridge deck and created some amazing surf right under the boat. Two days of heaven.
It was interesting to pass through the container ship anchorage in Savannah, Georgia. In these times of supply train problems, we counted 28 tankers and container ships waiting for port entry. Okay, we've got a really great sale going on here in the afternoon, most of um, really mid-morning or, or beyond. And we're now up to almost the max condition of the parasail, 20 knots of, 21 knots of true wind speed. Now when it can handle it, it just becomes difficult to get her down, which will happen of course upon arrival, which might be around 8 o'clock this evening. Hopefully we can get it down without a problem, but it sure does scoot you along. So all we have up, of course, is the parasail, and we're running straight downwind right to our target, which you can see if you go aft and along the hull, the speed that you can get from it. It's really amazing. All right, last day of the trip, Captain Steven, mate Kevin. You want to be called mate or you want a different name? Oh, maybe a different name. Um, able-bodied seaman. Able-bodied seaman. There you go, able-bodied seaman. I like that. What'd you think of your trip, Kevin? It was good. Good sailing, good food, Definitely. good crew. Definitely a good sale. Yeah. Enough excitement for you? Yeah, it was good. We really didn't have uh, a lot of bad weather. No, nope, just a couple of storms. Just a couple of storms. A lot of sail changes that one day. Yeah. Yes. Put in a reef, take out the reef, yeah. put in the jib, put out the jib. <laughs> Too much trimming them for a day. So are you going to do this by yourself someday? That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> 